Welcome to another moment in the Word. Do you come to God and feel unworthy? Do you feel that when you're speaking to Him, your words just aren't good enough? Do you feel that you're not religious enough, you're not spiritual enough, somehow or another, you're not good enough? And, and maybe there are others in your life that have reinforced that belief. Maybe they have looked at you and marginalized you. Well, that's what we see here in the passage we're looking at. A woman that is a Syrophoenician woman, a woman that's from the area of Tyre and Sidon, a woman that is a Canaanite, a woman that is not Jewish. And she is desperate. She's desperate because she has someone that she loves that is desperately ill. In fact, they're not just ill. There's a spiritual battle going on in this one's life. It is a demon possession that is going on. And she is crying out to Jesus. And she is crying out for mercy. And that's where we'll pick up in verse 25 and meditating down to verse 28. And it says, Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not right to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, yes, Lord. Yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it unto you even as you will. And her daughter was made well from that very hour. This is such an amazing passage and such a contrast to what we see. What we saw earlier in chapter 15 where the Pharisees were so bent on rituals and rules that they looked at what Jesus had just done in the feeding of the 5,000, that's the men, not counting women and children, and that they did not wash their hands. They did not do the rituals that are required as part of the Jewish faith. They were not mikvid. They were not clean. They were not pure in their mind, clean hands and a pure heart. They cleanliness next to godliness. They needed to wash their hands. And so they criticized Jesus. And then the disciples... There's such a contrast with them, too, because Jesus had gone to this part that's no longer in Israel. It's in actually what we would call Lebanon today. He's getting away, and there is an attempt to find some solace, some quiet. But this woman learns of Jesus, and she cries out, and she the first word out of her mouth is mercy. And she's crying out for mercy, and the reason why she's crying out for mercy she says, have mercy on me. And then she says, Lord, son of David, Lord being God, the one who is the Adonai, the sovereign of the universe, she recognizes that he's more than a man. And she also recognizes that he is the Messiah. He is the one who has come as the savior of the world, but to the Jew first. She recognizes that, but she's screaming and she was relentless. She's persevering. She's not quitting. Her love for her daughter now causes her to continue to cry out for mercy. And as she does, she says, have mercy on me. My daughter is grievously vexed. It's her daughter that's driving her. Perhaps in your life, there is someone that you are interceding for, and it is not about you. It is about your love for someone else. Jesus looked at the multitudes, and he had compassion. The disciples looked at this woman and saw her as an annoyance and said to the master, dismiss her. Get her out of here. She's drawing attention. Everybody in the village is now knowing where you're at. Get rid of her. But that's not where the story ends. And Jesus instead, he says that he has come not but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Notice the word not it appears four time, three times here. That it appears in verse 23 that he answered her not. Verse 24 that he was not sent but to the lost sheep of Israel. And then verse 26, it's not right 
there's a lot of negatives, aren't there? And maybe there are in your life. It seems that as you come to the Lord out of a desperate need, perhaps for someone that you love, there's a lot of negatives. But she doesn't quit. And I hope you see yourself in this woman because she is a paragon of what real faith is like. And so we'll see that the Lord says, I am not sent but to the lost house, lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yes, that is true. He came to his own first and his own received him not. It is through the covenant that God had made with Abraham that through Israel, all the nation, the goyim, the, the Gentiles would be blessed. And so Jesus is coming and he has come to the house of Israel. That's his priority. And but we find she in verse 25 it says then, if you have a, a King James Version, it, but it should have been translated but, but not an adversive but, but. It's not an argument. She is not in any way debating Jesus. Instead, she says, yes, I agree to the house of Israel, but consider that she came and she continues to worship him. So she's not focusing on people. She's focusing on the Lord. She's not focusing on her race. She's focusing on the Lord. She's not focusing on her nation. She's focusing on the Lord. She's not focusing on her history and the Canaanites and their history and the relationship that they had with the Jewish people. She's not focusing on that. She's focusing on one thing. She's focusing on the Lord. And the word is that she came and it's an aorist participle. In other words, she, as she was coming, she worshiped, but that's in the imperfect. In other words, it wasn't just simply that she fell on her knees or that she fell prostrate on her face, and that was it. No, worship was a continuing act for her. She did not stop. And please notice, when you're in the presence of God and you know that you're in the presence of God, my dear one, do you stop worshiping? That's why it is Solomon who says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. You don't need to pray for God to join you today. He is very much in your presence. If you don't know him, he's still in your presence. Everything in this world speaks of the glory of God. And if that be the case, then it is for us to open our hearts and our eyes and our ears to receive him. And now this woman, she's worshiping him. She knows that Jesus is God who has come in the flesh. And the only one that can address her is his mercy to address her need. And so she then cries out, Lord. Again, notice the word Lord. And we'll find that that word is emphasized again and again four times. Lord, help me. Notice this word is different. This word is not the same word as Leo that we found earlier talking about mercy. No, this word is a word that's in the present tense. In other words, help me now in the condition that I have. I need mercy. Mercy is that you stay judgment. But the second is, I need help. Much as Peter that was sinking in the water, Lord, save me. And is that what you're saying as you look at your life now? Lord, I need help. And is there anything that you can do for yourself or anyone else that can do for you? No, it is the Lord ultimately himself that is our helper in time of need. And so consequently, we find in verse 26, and we have but. But it's not a but again that is in combat, con contradiction, or contrast. Instead, it, it is where you see a chess game that is being played out here. And the Lord is the master, and she is playing right along with him. And he says, but, and he answers, and he says, it is not Right. The word right is not talking about moral rightness. It's not talking about right and wrong. It's talking about appropriateness. It's not appropriate to take 
the children's bread. This is at a family gathering, a family meal. They had just come from a house. They had just fed the 5,000. They were 5,000 Jews. And now he is in this context and he's saying it's not appropriate to take the food off the table and give it to the dogs. Instead, the children are to get it. However, this word that is used for dogs, it's not the typical word for a, a dog that's a, that is a, 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 a scoundrel, that is a, 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 a mutt or, or a scavenger or something like that. This means a little dog. It is a little dog as if it was a pet in the family. It is a little dog where there was a relationship. There was a relationship, and as the children were eating, the crumbs, better translated fragments, would fall, and they, therefore, the little dog would come and be right by the children to get the fragments. Now, when you hear the word fragments immediately, you think about the feeding of the 5,000 again, don't you? And after the feeding of the 5,000, was that just barely enough? Or were there leftovers? And that's what we have, 12 baskets of leftovers. And where did they go? Remember, Jesus is the bread of life. And his words, we don't live by bread alone, but by every word. His bread is life. His words are life. And the fragments, that which we get from the Jewish people. Notice that all that was written in the scriptures and the Tanakh is written by a Jew. And as we go to the New Testament, except for the writings of Luke, all are written by Jewish people. We who are Gentile have the fragments of that which was given to Jewish people. And now she says that even dogs would be ones getting the fragments. And she said, but Jesus said, it's not good to give to the little, uh, the dogs, what would be given to the children. And Jesus, and she says, truth? No, the word in Greek is not amen. The word in Greek is actually the word for yes. Yes, Lord. Please notice, now we've had the third time that this word Lord is used. First in verse 22, Lord, son of David. In verse 25, Lord, help me. Here now, yes, Lord. And she's agreeing with him. What is she doing? She's humble. She's recognizing, I'm a dog. And when somebody tells you you're not worthy, what do you do? Argue and say, oh, yes, I am. Or do you say, yes, I am not worthy? I'm not worthy. I am a sinner. I have fallen far short of God's glory. The fact of the matter is, you and I come like this woman and say, I'm a dog. But then notice what she goes on to say, that even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Now this word master should have been also translated, it's the same Greek word, should have been translated the Lord's table. And when you think of the Lord's table, immediately you think of the Eucharist, don't you? And when you think of the fragments, immediately you think of the broken bread. Jesus saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat. You're taking just a fragment, but that fragment is more than enough to satisfy and to give you life and give you life abundant. In that incredible and so the lord then responds to her and verse 28 then jesus answered and he said unto her o woman now that word oh it's really a a very very strong interjection it's only used five times in the gospel of matthew it's usually used in reference to, O oh, ye of little faith. It's a condemnation. It's a word of, of, of expression that that is surprising that you are the condition that you're in. It's only once that it's used in a positive sense, and it's found here. It's found with this woman, and he is saying, O oh, woman, and it is an expression then of commendation. Our Lord is commending her. And please notice, 
It wasn't because of her background. It wasn't because of her culture, her race, her ethnicity, her nationality. It was because of her humility and because she persisted in worship, because she loved someone that she refused to stop in praying for them. And he says, oh, woman, that word woman, by the way, that's the same word that Jesus used at the wedding of Cana when he was speaking to his mother. It's the same word he used from the cross when he is speaking to John. Behold your mother and then to Mary. It is the same woman that, or the same word that is used first time in Genesis and chapter two when God created Eve and Adam looks at her and says, she shall be called woman, for she is out of man. And notice its relationship. That word, woman, gyne, is the word of relationship. She has a relationship. The Pharisees didn't have that relationship. The disciples are still working on that relationship. She has it. And then Jesus says, there has been not such great faith that he has seen. Oh, my dear ones, I pray that it is your faith, your relationship with the Lord. It is him that is most preeminent in your life. And that very instant, Matthew says, her little one was healed. The prayer that she had, Lord have mercy on me, was answered. God hears your prayers. He will have mercy. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for your great mercy toward us, that we can find mercy and help in time of need, that we can come boldly in the name of Jesus on the best basis of his shed blood, that we know that you do abundantly, exceedingly well above all we can ask or think. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.